Welcome dear friends, I know you are on your second phase of preparation that means you might have completed your conventional topics and then you have to move on to a revision mode where you are preparing now, you are recollecting the factual aspects for your prelims. So I am here to introduce before you a learning method where there is no need of much revision that means once while you are learning you are keeping things for you in such a manner that with absolute ease you can recollect these things for the examination. Do you know why you are forgetting things so easily, especially from topics like economics, polity, which is highly conceptual? Most important thing is we are relying on certain guides which is printed for following for ex ex some exams, clearing for some exams. And we are not following exactly uh, what all things were the historical underpinnings, ideological underpinnings and what happened in between is missing for us. So here it is just like mugging up things and no aspirant who is preparing for a particular competitive exam can go through all the relevant materials and all historical facts which is required for learning things. So that is also impossible. So what else can be done? Here actually we are trying to help you out with certain topics which is most important for this year's prelims that is topics from conventional area which were always there in news during 2018 to 19. So during this time there was a lot of things from the conventional subjects which was prevalent in newspapers so that you can expect it in the next prelims. Here we are trying to give you connectivity regarding these things in an analytical fashion where you can learn the things through this video and you can remember it with absolute ease. Here I am trying to introduce before you the collegium system for appointment of judges to Supreme Court and High Court in India. India while appointing judges to its apex court at the center and to its apex court at the state it usually follows a, a process called the collegium recommendation system and through this system we are trying to guarantee independent judiciary which is considered as a sine qua non or an absolute necessity for the functioning of a participatory democracy. The typical method followed by the aspirants is that they will go to M. Lakshmi Gang, they will study what is a collegium, what is the definition of a collegium, what is the composition of the collegium, what is the process followed by the collegium while appointing a judge to the Supreme Court or High Court and what is the role of President of India or any other constitutional functionaries regarding the appointment of judges. So here you can mug it up and you can try to recollect it while during exams. But there is every possibility that a person who is trying to mug up all this fact may forget it during an exam tension. Here we can do some other things. First thing is you can make it more interesting by learning things which you are supposed to know from the history about how the collegium system of appointment of judges has evolved in India. There is a right a sound historical pathway through which the collegium system has emerged. That means from the day one of the constitutional experiment of India, we were not having a collegium system for the appointment of judges. So first thing you have to know about or why you are learning about a collegium system is what was the method of appointment of judges which we have been following before the introduction of a collegium system that is mentioned in article 124 as well as 217 of Indian constitution. 124 of Indian Constitution discuss about how a judge to the Supreme Court is appointed and article 217 of Indian Constitution specifically 217 clause 2 of Indian Constitution talks about how a judge to the High Court of individual states concerned are appointed. Article 124 makes it clear that it is the duty of the President of India under the guidance given by the Council of Ministers, aid and advice given by the Council of Ministers to decide the panel of judges to be appointed to the Supreme Court. And it also mentions that during this process of recommendation, 
the president shall the president shall consult the chief justice if other judges are appointed or any other senior most judges of supreme court if he deems that it is fit so after consulting one or more judges from the supreme court the president can finalize the panel of judges to the supreme court that was mentioned in article 124 of indian constitution and regarding high court judge article 217 said the president of india after consulting three constitutional functionaries that is the supreme court chief justice high court chief justice as well as the governor of the concerned state to which we are appointing the judges that means to the respective high court we have to consult the respective governor of the state after consulting these three constitutional functionaries a panel of judges to the high court can be done appointed finalized by the president of india so here there was a clear supremacy given to the central government as well as the president of india who is just consulting the chief justice or the judiciary itself before appointing judges to the judiciary this was the process which we were following before the introduction of collegium in india so first thing you have to know before learning about collegium is what was the system prevailing in india now you have to know why this system where there was a supremacy for the executive in appointing judges was replaced or removed or altered the reason can be identified from Kesav Ananda Bharati case you know Kesav Ananda Bharati case has nothing to do with appointment of judges then you will be wondering why we have to study about Kesav Ananda Bharati case while we are talking about collegium but the thing is we were appointing senior most judges of the supreme court as the chief justice of supreme court it was a convention and there was no constitutional mandate or requirement for the government of india to appoint the person who is the senior most judge of the supreme court to the supreme court chief justice panel so that was not required that was not mandatory requirement from the constitution but there was a convention which we used to follow that means we used to appoint the senior most judges and Keshavananda Bharati case in 1973 Keshavananda Bharati case was actually a, a fatal blow on the government and its power to amend the constitution because Keshavananda Bharati case introduced the concept called basic structure which has substantially limited the power of the parliament or the central government to make amendments in the constitution which can potentially hamper the interest of fundamental principles of the constitution or the basic structure of the constitution and the government was not very happy with the supreme court's decision and supreme court has passed it with a wafer thin majority that is it was considered by a 13 member bench and seven members of the bench has supported it three six members of the bench has opposed it so this people who has supported it created basic structure doctrine and which was actually which made uh, the central government unhappy and as a retaliatory measure you can say it as a retaliatory measure mrs indira gandhi has appointed she has broken the convention of appointment of the senior most judges of the supreme court as the chief justice rather she considered an ray a person who has given a clear dissent not against the concept of basic structure doctrine and rather who has upheld the idea of parliamentary supremacy regarding the amendment of the constitution this person was chosen by the central government as the cji that too after overriding three senior most judges who were available in the same panel but who has supported the basic structure doctrine that means here the government has exercised their discretionary power regarding the appointment of chief justice and their personal favorite or a person whose ideology is going hand in hand with the government's decision and ideology he was chosen as the chief justice of india in this case there were wide criticism from different quarters of the country or democratic uh, aspirants democratic people of this country were concerned about this decision of the central government because 
This was an encroachment into the independence of the judiciary, which we are actually expecting from a democratic state, a constitutional state. This was actually an encroachment or an attempt of encroaching into the judicial independence. And followed by this, we got a case in the Supreme Court in 1981. That was first judge's case for S.P. Gupta and others versus Union of India. In this case, the methodology or the process which we were following in the appointment of judges in India to the Supreme Court and High Court was challenged and the Supreme Court for the first time considered the system of appointment of judges to its own panel. The idea of or the concept of consultation which is mentioned in both article 124 and 217 is verified and analyzed by the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court identified that the consultation is simply a process where the president, the executive head of the country who is acting on the advice of the council of ministers whose advice means something which is an articulation of public opinion. In a democracy, the decision of the council of ministers is nothing but the articulation of public opinion. So they are advising the president to appoint certain people of as judges of the Supreme Court after consulting Supreme Court Chief Justice or other judges if required. So this method, what should be consultation? Here Supreme Court has clearly decided that even though Chief Justice of India is an eminent person, it is not binding on the President to go with the decision of the Supreme Court or if while he is consulted, Supreme Court Chief Justice has consulted regarding the appointment of judges, he is, if he is having a different opinion from that of the opinion of President and the Central Government, it is not binding on the President to obey the decision given by the Supreme Court Chief Justice. So here, Supreme Court has clearly restricted its own power by saying that consultation in this context is not concurrence. That is, if the central government is having a different decision, they can have their way without the concurrence of the Supreme Court Chief Justice. So it was a landmark judgment and it has reaffirmed the power of executive in appointing judges. In 1993 came the next case which is Supreme Court Advocates on Record versus Union of India where the decision of the Supreme Court regarding appointment of judges and the consultation process was again considered. Here the Supreme Court came forward with the idea of collegium. That is Supreme Court said that for maintaining the independence of judiciary, there must be a clear role for the Supreme Court in appointing its judges. If executive is arbitrarily appointing judges based on the recommendation of the political class, there is every chance that the judicial independence may be hampered, may be affected, may be intervened and that can have an impact on judgments being pronounced because if the political class is appointing their personal favorites as Supreme Court judges, Supreme Court can't function as a bulwark of protection for the rights, individual rights and civil liberties of the people while there is an executive excess or a misuse of power. In the first judges case itself, there was a reference to the idea of collegium, that is the Supreme Court has mentioned in the judgment that the central government should consider asking the opinion of more than one judge as mandated by the constitution because it will give more clarity. So that was an opinion but it was not an order or it was not a part of the verdict as such so that was uh, omitted and the central government was exercising its power in appointing Supreme Court judges till then. But in 1993 when the Supreme Court advocates on record filed another case against Union of India where 
they again put the word consultation and article 124 and 217 was again questioned in Supreme Court to ensure or to clarify what is consultation exactly. In this case, Supreme Court has clearly given its decision saying that the independence or the supremacy which is granted to central government regarding the appointment of Supreme Court judges can have a potential impact on the independence part of judiciary. That is, if a person who is a, a personal favorite of a political class is appointed as a judge in the Supreme Court, there is every chance that the justice may be tilted towards the government. Government being the greatest litigant of the country and greatest violator in all cases of fundamental right violations, here this can have an impact on justice delivery mechanism of the system as a whole. So judiciary must be given supremacy while the judges are elected. This is the only solution for the problem. And they solve the problem by declaring that consultation mentioned in article 124 and 217 of Indian constitution is not just an advisory stuff, rather it is concurrence. You have to keep in mind that it is not a consultative mechanism where they are giving certain advice which can be readily overrided by the Supreme Court, sorry, readily overrided by the central government. Rather, it is all about the decision given by the Supreme Court must be obeyed by the central government. So, consultation part was converted into concurrence after the second judge's case. And a term called the collegium was first introduced as part of as a matter of law. Here, rather than consulting the CJI, a collegium of the CJI and two senior post judges of the Supreme Court were supposed to be consulted while appointing judges to Supreme Court. Similarly, the CJI and Two senior most judges of the High Court is to be consulted while up making appointments to the respective High Court. Here, the independence of the judiciary or judges appointing judges, the idea of judges appointing judges was clearly earmarked by the Supreme Court and the concept of collegium system for the first time was introduced after second judges case in 1993. Here, from here onwards, the appointments to the Supreme Court of India and High Court of India is practically done by the Collegium. That is, the President of India can recommend his panel and that panel will be considered by the Supreme Court Collegium. And this Collegium, if they are not giving a recommendation which is favorable to the appointment, then the decision of the Supreme Court will prevail. If the president is sending back the recommendation and the collegium is sending it again without any amendments, then it is binding on the president to approve the panel as a whole and appoint everybody which is mentioned in this panel as the judge. So this was the situation which has emerged after 1993 second judges case. And in 1998 there was a third judges case where the collegium was expanded to include four senior most judges of the Supreme Court to the Collegium while making this decision. So now, as of now, there is four senior most judges plus the Supreme Court Chief Justice and the majority of this Collegium is required for appointment of judges. If two judges of the senior most uh, judges of the Supreme Court is against a recommendation given by the Collegium, then that recommendation has to be amended. So this is the situation. But here there is a clear supremacy of the judiciary regarding appointment of judges. So judicial independence, the concept of judicial independence has been preserved by giving concurrence or giving a supremacy to the Supreme Court Collegium regarding the appointment of judges. But this system was also heavily criticized because it is undemocratic for judges to appoint judges because there will be a camaraderie existing between the judges, there will be personal prejudices of the judges, there will be uh, personal favorites 
homer they might have given some favors to this judge so no accountability part was there and the, there was no guidelines specifically given for the judges to give their recommendation regarding who is to be the next judge to the supreme court so this was considered as an undemocratic system and based on this criticism the central government came forward with the 99th constitutional amendment act which proposed national judicial appointments commission which is not just only composed of the judges rather the composition of national judicial appointments commission was the cji two senior most judges of the supreme court two eminent personalities appointed by a council and the members of the council were the prime minister the cji and the leader of opposition also was the member of this council and this three member council will appoint the other two members here along with them there will be the law minister here it was there was a balance that is judiciary executive and two eminent personalities were there in the committee so that means there is more accountability and the process will become more democratic this was the concept of the central government but in the four judges case which considered the 99th constitutional amendment act declared the amendment act itself to be unconstitutional as it potentially hampers the interest of judicial independence and it restored the idea of collegium so presently even though there was a concept of national judicial appointments commission and the, but our attempt was unfortunately a failure regarding that and what is the current procedure through which a judge is appointed to the supreme court in that case it is the collegium system where there is the cji as well as four senior most judges of the supreme court panel selecting the judges to be appointed as supreme court judges so here there is a clear system which is available now and you have to know about that system but if you are knowing it simply without knowing all these historical underpinnings then it will be difficult for you to remember things rather if you know the whole story it will be easy for you to remember what all things are there right now and on the ground of uh, what happened in the recent times there was problems within the judiciary regarding the appointments and there was problems related to the there was standoff between the executive and the judiciary in this context number of time this was uh, there in the newspapers you can so you can expect a question based on the collegium or this hall's part and for remembering that you can follow this method this video thank you